my earlier life, it was a lot of exploration. I dove all around the world before scuba diving became terribly popular. Saw a really, really wonderful thing. Art's always been a, an incredible passion for me. I could always do it well, even when I was a little kid. I got in trouble all the time for drawing pictures all over the desk of the school and on my homework and things like that. So I strove to be an artist. It worked out very well for me. And then I went to the Art Students League in New York City. I was in the Army at the time. I was drafted. But uh, during my time off from the Army, I'd go to the Art Students League and learn how to draw and paint. And did all of that and then started selling my paintings. And to my great surprise and happiness, uh, I sold all my stuff. I quickly evolved into storytelling with, with my arts. In other words, uh, I would pick a, a philosophical topic that fascinated me, you know, whether it had to do with spirituality, politics, uh, and things going on with different levels of humanity. And I would, I would pick something that either inspired me, um, bothered me, or, uh, you know, we'd start another war and that would, I'd find that very bothersome. And so I would comment on it and, you know, do a painting just like the one over your head, like collateral damage. And, you know, say, oh, let's do a little commentary thing. Let's see if we can, we can raise some consciousness or awareness about it, or I would do something that uh, had to do with like one of the paintings up here, I believe it's over my head, called uh, Trinity, which is, you know, two figures looking out into the universe off of a little ledge, and those two figures are you and somebody close to you. It's, it's not a portrait of anybody other than yourself. You're looking out and you're seeing the concentric rings of infinity, eternity, and and the, the center and glow of everything, like, uh, and some people might call it God, you know, and that type of thing. So it's a comment on spirituality. Those are the kind of things I drifted towards, whether it's spiritual, emotional, love, you know, something to do with the essence and power of humanity, or a, so, a strong social topic. I'll pick it, and if it means something to me, I'll paint something about it, and see if it moves you, because that's the end goal. Because if it doesn't create an emotion within you and draw you into it, I haven't succeeded. And you don't have to be taught about art. It either moves you or it doesn't. And if it moves you, you might want it. And no one can teach you about it. It should you shouldn't shouldn't have to be taught about it. It's either it's it's like music. You listen to a piece of music and you go, God, I love that. That, that does a, that does a beautiful thing to me, or it excites me. Uh, you know, I, I I feel something from it. I've been a lifelong aviator, so I painted the painting called The Dream of Flight of which my dear friend Bill Wyland happens to own the original of it. And uh, the dream of flight is a fantasy of man in his kind of early stages of dreaming about flight. It's a fun painting. I felt from very, very early on, that was one of my first uh, surrealistic pieces. It's a social commentary on what I believed was one of the biggest problems of mankind and that was for our planet to support. And we're starting to see that now because our demands for energy and things like that are starting to affect the climate of Earth itself. You know, there's food shortages everywhere and that type of thing. So I painted that back literally in the 60s, late 60s. I showed it around to local galleries and they went, whoa, that's really strange. And I couldn't get it on display anywhere, so I put it in a window in the Palm Beach shopping mall of a store and just kind of left it there for a little while. And Jacques Cousteau and Jacques Picard 
were writing a paper about the potential of overpopulation of the earth. They saw the painting and they called me and they said, can we use this as a visual for our paper? And I said, gentlemen, I'll be totally honored to let you do that. And they did. And it was published in French. And, uh, and, and now we're dealing with that on a, on a global scale now, which is, it's quite severe. I did a painting called uh, Rainbow Dolphins. And I say, it's, uh, let's go underwater. I love the ocean. So I go out in it, and so I'm going to say, I think I'll put a little twist on this thing. And let's see uh, if we look up at the light and we actually put a rainbow in with the, in with the dolphins. And it sounds kind of far-fetched, but let's see what people think about it. So I did, and everybody loved it. And another one of the really popular ones was Night Street. It's because everybody, that I know anyway, has kind of wandered out in the night into the street, kind of looking for adventure somewhere out there, whatever your fancy might be, or just wandering about and seeing what comes to you. And of course I'd been, you know, when I painted that painting, I grew up in New York City. And later on I ended up, you know, in, in Tokyo and Osaka, London and places like that. And I said, let me, let me kind of portray this thing. I'm an inventor by nature also. One of my passions was to generate energy from the movement of waves in the sea in the form of buoys. Capture natural forces of energy around the globe that are not being addressed today. And so that's what I did, whether it's uh, uh, urban wind, urban wind meaning wind in and around the buildings and in cities with the high rises and energy from the waves of the sea. There's millions of miles of rivers on this, on this earth that are not being addressed and they flow, capturing that energy and you know, that type of thing. Bill's been a very dear friend of mine for, I hate to tell you how long, I mean, you know, we're going, <laughs> we're going back probably about 30 some odd years. And he and I went our separate ways. I went off into the energy business and so did he. And then finally Bill put this beautiful gallery together and said, you know, John, I'd love for you to come back. You know, I like the way you paint. And uh, why don't you tell some more stories with your paintings? And I said, Sure, Bill. You're my buddy.